To my left is Pete Kelly. To my right is Jeremy Hansen. Um, Dana Hadley, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our treasurer. Uh, I would like to call to order the public hearing for the town plan. So, this is the second. So, this is the second select board, I mean, the Planning Commission has approved a draft of the town plan. We had it held our public hearing. We uh, forwarded it to the select board. We had a hearing last week. Um, we did have comments last week from um, Bob Warnick, um, Ron Lyon, and Michael Rushman, who have been involved in the process. Um, but they all were, I think, um, speaking for them, but they seem happy with, with the draft. Mm -hmm. um, so this is by statute, we have to have a, the select board has to have a second public hearing on the town plan, so that's what this is. Um, this is Clara Eyre, she's also on the planning commission. Um, so <laughs> it doesn't look like we have any, this is really just for public comment, uh, and anybody that's interested in providing comment. Uh, I don't know if you, you folks have any questions for us. Did the, the changes that they talked about last week, did those get incorporated? Yes. Okay. You, my understanding is yes. I mean, Brandy incorporated them into the document, and my understanding is is that what the process would be that you, as the select board, would forward the plan as approved or as amended with the implementation plan and the the map. The um, planning commission did vote to approve those things at their meeting. Well, actually, not the map, but I think that's a minor adjustment, and it's okay that you do that without it going back. So it would just be, you would just approve it with, assuming you approve it, you would vote to um, put it on the ballot as amended at the last meeting, right. is how I understand it. You do have an agenda item a little further down to oh. approve the town plan. Oh, okay. Um, but but where, where is that most up-to-date town town plan? Right here. On with, with the amendments? Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was just a redrawing of the, um, the, the changes were, and they weren't change, they weren't substantive changes because right. the implementation plan just incorporated all of the action items that were already in the document. Mm -hmm. Just putting them in right. one place and assigning, you know, sort of saying who would be responsible. But there was a change to the map. The map, it was a change to the map, and, but what that means is it's, it's creating a larger area and saying it would be defined when we actually, assuming we actually go forward with the, the um, town center application. So we're, we're basically just creating bigger boundaries from within which we will from. draw the new lines. Those are not the lines for the town center district. Those are just where we would choose the town center designation area from. Because it can only be 125 acres as a maximum. And that area, as outlined, is bigger than that. Um, and the reason for that was that Michael Rushman, I guess, is engaged in some kind of or the mall owners are engaged with some kind of discussions with you folks about swapping land with the school. With the school. school district. With the school, yeah. Um, so that they can, I think, have access at some point. Right. So we had excluded that portion of the t of that area from the map originally. So it's just in there for flexibility. For, of, the, of the yellow section yes. or the, the red boundary section? The the, yellow that yellow boundary, boundary section got bigger Okay. Okay. to include that area in case there's a swap. I see. And that was recommended also by the state. The state um, approved fate, that, so uh, that was okay. I can't think of Faith's name, but yeah. it's just that we would have to define it. So there's two things: we would define it obviously in an application, and then we would have to town center designations have to be uh, reapproved, or you have to be recertified every five years. Right. The map we will we would have to vote. We would have to re review the town plan and revote on the town plan so that that's a permanent map before we recertify. For the town center, but timing wise, I think we'd probably be doing the town plan around that same time, so I don't think it's that's an issue. Because she said that when you recertify, it has to be in the town plan what the, the, right. the designated area is, and that's why she, she, being the state, suggested that they go ahead and do it now, yeah, yeah, okay. So, so those are the only changes, right? And then the implementation chapter at the end which basically is your um, who does what, who's responsible for what. Any other comments, Jeff?
Any comments? <laughs> I, I just want to say we, I mean, we were very lucky to have been able to use Brandy or have Brandy work for, work on this, and the fact that she had done the zoning. I mean, I, I shouldn't say this, but she's working with another town, and they spent a much greater amount of time on their town plan. And they were, when I spoke, I, I worked with, with one of the folks on that planning commission, and he was shocked that she was able to do it so quickly. And I said it's because she knew already. What you know, where what what the goals were because mm -hmm. she had worked on the zoning, so she was able to put it together really quickly, and so we were very fortunate yeah. to be able to take advantage of. I think her that knowledge. helped a lot. She didn't yes. have to reinvent the wheel, yes. and, 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 and even could, though it looks yeah. like a very different document, she said a lot of the information came you know sort of came out of the old plan. It's just it's just in a different format, and it's just more easily readable, and you know the graphics all help. So I think it's just a really I we've had, we've gotten very positive feedback from anybody that's reviewed it or read it or, or so the comments have all been good. So if the board approves that when you get to that agenda item, there's also another agenda item putting it on the ballot no. um, for the August 14th vote. Yes. Yeah. Claire was just mentioning that we don't have a town plan now asking if we knew. Right. And we the town plans are eight years now. Yeah. Eight years. Yes, yeah, so the new yeah. period. Yeah. Is this yours? Or can you, you can keep that one. Okay. Yeah. Would you rather have one with a staple? Okay. Anything else? Uh, not that I can, I mean, unless you have questions. Sounds good to me. What's that be? So that I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's been going on quite a little while. It has. I mean, we between the, the zoning was obviously that was a two year process, and then we sort of once we got Brandy on board, this what was it in January? I think so. It's been a yeah. fairly quick process yeah. to actually get this redrafted once we got yeah. her. When, you know, when volunteers, it's hard to actually rewrite a document yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. And I'd like to um, echo Bob Warnick's statement last week of how much we appreciate all, I know you spent hours on this mm -hmm. and have been very mindful and also considerate to citizens who had questions on that. So yeah. I congratulate well, you. Yeah. And it's yeah. always nice when people do take part and participate and we do get an audience because we always want to hear from people and we don't always. So when mm -hmm. we do, we try to be very respectful of their comments. You'll hear after it's just. Of course. <laughs> 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 I don't think that I really think there's nothing controversial in here or, or even any big changes. It's really just you know a little bit a little bit more futuristic in the sense of um, looking at where we would you know where we go in ten years in terms of development, ten twenty years. But it's not really anything. There's nothing in there that's you know surprising. It's really more of what we have in our current town plan. So I think it. I don't think it. I don't expect it to be a controversial. I you know one of your voters. I hope anyway. <laughs> If there's nothing else, close the, we'll close the uh, public hearing for the town plan. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you. Um, You're welcome to stay, of course. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> Probably not. It's very hot in here. <laughs> but thank you very much. Yeah, thank thank you. you. I will call Dana to make sure everything went through okay. Okay. And yeah. assuming it does, you you will be contacting Brandy, right? Or do you want? I will I'll make call you in the morning. We'll make sure it happens, okay. you and I and Tom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll figure Great. it out what okay. our logistics are. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I just thought I'd take this, too. Yeah. <laughs> We've got five minutes to kill for the agenda item for the town. Well, I could go see if they're ready to. Are you, are you talking about the uh, Vermont appraisal? Well, no, i got to take and call the select board meeting to order. That's right. Okay. Yeah, it's on the agenda for 715. Yes. We can move up the license permits and auction applications and <laughs> get that out of the way. We don't know. Yeah, I wish we could, but we had to be in the select board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, because it was warned for 715. 715. Right. Oftentimes, I think I should just now put times. You know, six of one and a half dozen. In, immediately following the public mm. hearing. I thought that was pretty good, yeah. 
Well, sometimes the public hearing can go on for hours. Well, yeah, you don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Though some of those meetings I went to were pretty well attended earlier. There was I think there was a lot of interest in the meetings, and yeah. they got a lot of feedback. Right, and then it um, sort of so smoothed out a little bit. And, and I think they were very responsive to the input. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to go get Ted and then just say, look, you're going to be open? Um, well, we're not in a meeting yet, I guess. Oh, we're waiting to yeah. convene. It's kind of like the plane and meeting get them. Ten yeah. minutes before the published departure date. <laughs> Having time. Yeah, it's kind of like when you're sitting at Newark and they say, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be boarding the airplane for Burlington any moment now. Thank you for your patience, <laughs> any moment. And then yeah, 20 minutes later. All of later, you go sit down. <laughs> just go sit down. Yeah, we'll be boarding the plane. And when we board, people with children, people that need help, so forth and so on. Then they say, ladies and gentlemen, we're waiting for a mechanic to come look at the plane. She <laughs> <laughs> got such a call. Yeah. You do that for a living. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then they come back and they say, well, you now need to go to another gate, which of course is in East Five Orange, New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They had a big old jet, I don't even know what it was, come in here and it filled up with fuel and they pushed it back out of the way and then drip, drip, oh, drip no. right out of the engine. So it's still here with guys climbing all over it with scaffolding and trying I, to I don't know it. what the problem is, but. Oh, they could, they could probably tr just take off, it'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> but you know those fractionals? They're these groups of mechanics that have huge vans full of everything to just go, 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 wherever they need to in the country to fix them stuck. The one got iced up in here for two weeks and uh, I couldn't believe the work they had to do it just because it had been sitting outside and not started and it was cold. They had to do all sorts of things to test it out first. Make sure it was okay. Yeah. It's got to be huge freaking money to do that, just mm -hmm. enormous. Well, you stop and think you have a cold engine, you fire it up. You don't want to take and get it too hot too fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whew. But then you stop and think those engines are made to run in some pretty cold weather. Right. But once they're running, the pressure is in the beginning and the end. Once they're running, there's really no pressure. It's just, and that's, you know, the 48 hours nonstop, no problem. Just don't touch that throttle. <laughs> And when we got those pumps for the car washes with the V-drives on them, they would spool down, but they wouldn't shut off. So if nobody came in for eight or nine minutes, that pump, it was doing 67 gallons a minute, it would just spin down. And then when the demand came, it would spool back up and say, uh, 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 uh. In uh, the dairy business, they have um, uh, the same setup on vacuum pumps. Uh -huh. They're a big power user. Modern dairy, they're probably running 50 horsepower, hmm. you know, just for the milking machine. Yeah, just for the vacuum pump. Clarissa just left. You'll have to do it back. She, she did? She just went outside, yeah. Oh. Probably just made her join. It's legal yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see Clarissa doing that. <laughs> You know, I've thought forever all drugs should be legal. I mean, trillions of dollars leave the country and go to these badasses all around the world. And we sit here with a headache, you know, and we're doing it anyways. So just stop giving the world the money. You know, Nancy Reagan had it half right. It should have been legalize all drugs, then just say no. <laughs> Not just say no. <laughs> we on camera? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was checking. I asked yeah. him to edit out the middle. Oh. Yeah. All set? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening. I'd like to call the Berlin Select Board for Monday, July 2nd to order. Uh, to my left is Pete Kelly. To my right is Jeremy Hansen. I'm Brad Town. This is, uh, to my far right is Dana 
Hadley, our town administrator, and to my far left is Diane Isabel, town treasurer. Uh, let's see, any additions or changes to the agenda? No, I have none. Uh, public comment? Hearing none. Okay, Vermont Appraisal Company. Okay, let me go tell them to come on down. Yeah, that's fine. You can even bring the chair up if you'd like. We'll be cozy. Yeah. No AC in here, huh? Yes. <laughs> well, we're trying to be energy efficient. Uh, it's better than outside. <laughs> um, Vermont Appraisal Company since has had a little staff change since they last met with you. Um, you remember Ted Nelson, who was the, um, the lead, and Tom Kane has been here in Berlin for At least five years. years, four years, four or five, right, something like that. <laughs> and Clarissa Holmes has um, joined the team, and as far as all the clerical and the nitty gritty work that needs to be done, um, and they have provided to you. Um, we'd like to talk about the grand list. As you remember last year, the grand list had an error in it. They've been very careful not to have an error in it. Um, they've given you a summary of the grand list that was in your packet. Uh, also, a list of all properties and with the old and the new assessment. Um, and stop me if I speak, uh, don't speak correctly, but um, all the changes were sent to the property owner to notify them of the assessment change with an opportunity to grieve, and that was June something, 14th, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and I know you had a few, but we did. not we too many. What, six or yeah. something around yeah. six, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so, um, and our policy now calls for a visit quarterly to uh, um, bring you up to date on what's going on. I asked them to wait until they were done with the grand <coughs> list and come in now um, with the grand list total, um, which I guess is 500 million, 100, 1,800. 500 million, Okay. Um, some of the significant changes this year was the Honda dealership, eight Berlin H1 Realty is the Honda dealership, and as you know, they had quite a building project there. Um, the others are, are listed, what the changes were, and also that grand list total includes personal property taxes, which inventories are, are down and values are down, um, so that has decreased a little bit. So I guess I just wanted the board to have an opportunity to ask questions. Um, I'd also like to, we have included the form 411, which is a state form that um, I think, Clarissa, you'd be able to kind of help us yeah, I wasn't sure how, if they, who if, was familiar with the 411, if you've ever looked at it before or. Um, and this is the 411. It's. Okay. The report that the state uses to, uh, it's all our information in our grant list that goes to the state is summarized here. Um, it's summarized by category at the top, and 
the first paragraph is all the real property, and then they add the personal property if you tax personal property. And then below is all the exemptions. And these include veterans, your grange, um, the stabilization agreement with the Northfield Savings Bank, uh, current use, and the solar, which is taxed on the municipal side, but is not taxed on the education side. So it, cut, it shows up on the 411 as an exemption for the education grant list. But it is included with the uh, municipal. Is that the side. special exemptions, Clarissa, down near the bottom? Yes, yeah, special <laughs> exemptions. Okay. And, it's, and it's exempted. You can see uh, it's non-residential. It includes solar and uh, the qualified housing, which is um, I guess you have one County. apartment building yeah. in town. What is, it's an apartment building mm -hmm. that has uh, affordable housing restrictions. Yeah, it's on the top of Addison Drive. Yeah, yeah. And the state, if they if they uh, are using the whole building as an affordable housing entity, the state will give them um, this ten percent off on their education grant list. So. That solar, um, and if it's it's enumerated, if you go to page six, it shows that the um, the solar is nine oh eight three, and then the qualified housing is eighty five seven sixty four. That comes off just the education side. It it shows up as a full value on the municipal side. And that was the item that we um, realized had not been done last year and which has since been corrected. The, the current use oh. reduction um, may change a bit because the state has not finalized all their current use yet. There's still two or three properties that are under review because the owners have not provided all the information they need. So there's still two or three of those that are, are out there that um, may change a bit, but they won't change a lot. It'll be, um, and then the homestead, the homestead non-residential will change as of, um, as people file, but that won't affect your municipal, that first column of the 4, 411, which is the municipal grant list. So the grant list actually for real property went up, uh, by before exemptions, it went up by two million five forty six one. That was the number amount of the changes, but partial that was partially offset by the drop in the personal property. So what was our net increase, Clarissa? The net increase it was about a third of a percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From last year, we have uh, last year's four eleven. Just the first page. Of the okay. Yeah. So what is that in dollars? Do you know? Uh, last year's uh, municipal grant list, the final that you filed was four million, no, four, four billion. No, four hundred ninety-eight million. Yeah. <laughs> four hundred ninety-eight million, four hundred sixty-one thousand. So it was about two million. So about two. Okay. Thank you. So we feel pretty confident on the grant list this year. Um, I appreciate all the help that uh, Ted. <coughs> Tom and Clarissa have done. Um, Diane and I have been at them quite a bit, and I appreciate their patience. Um, well, we appreciate your giving us an opportunity to come back and continue to work for you. Uh, we know that was not easy for you, and it was not an easy time for us. Um, we're very pleased to have Clarissa working with us. She, uh, if you look at her arm and how badly it was twisted by Tom and I. Uh, <laughs> She, she's wanted to be retri in retirement. She reminds us of that pretty regularly. But uh, after almost 20 years of good service in um, Hartford, we were lucky to get her to work with our company. And uh, she's, uh, from my perspective, much more methodical. And uh, we, we do make errors. We try to make errors on the behalf of the property owner if we make any errors. And we correct them the following year. Um, 
but we try to be fair and reasonable, listen to people and the grievances. And um, I think to the most part, we've had a pretty successful year. I think we have one appeal coming up that uh, may come to the Board of Civil Authority. And that'll be an interesting case. They usually are, but uh, nothing like the what we had to go through last summer and really fall. We're, we're hoping, you know, knock on wood, that, that, that we won't compete anything like that. As you go over, if you read over any of these, the change list, if you have any questions on any of the changes, please let us know. You know I, I've listed them from the high to, to the low, high plus to low minus. So if you had any questions, once you have a chance to read it over, you know, just let us know. And uh, we can describe, or try to describe what the properties were. And this includes the utilities and the solar, everything is, is on this sheet. When we speak of solar, you should be aware as you made it, um, the first 50 kilowatts is exempt of a solar field. So most residential fields on a roof, for example, or even the trackers are out in someone's backyard. A single tracker with 10 or 12 panels would be far less than 50 kilowatts. A roof system may have seven to 10, yeah. something like that, eight or nine you know, kilowatts in a, in a conventional single family home. So you get into the four bigger ones that are over 50 and, and we, if it's net metered, in other words, if it goes back into the grid, we, only put a value on 70% of anything over 50 kilowatts. So even the huge ones that look like fish scales on the side of the mm -hmm. hill, uh, if those are truly net metered, then fir first 50 is a gimme and it, we're at 70% of those like that. So if you take those out, sometimes we're only in at half of what it really costs for someone to put together a solar field that is taxable. We did one this year in another town that was 52 kilowatts, so they were taxed at two kilowatts. I mean, you know, that's just the way the legislation works. So, and as I said, on page six of the 411, you'll see the solar listed um, with the own owners and the assessment. And the last column shows that they're exempt from um, education tax, except for. Um, Mr. Aluzzi, who owns land, your land is still gets taxed on the education. It's just the solar array that doesn't get taxed. So the other ones don't have any land with them. Um, and the he's the only one that has a land value. And those are separate accounts set up like the one on the auto dealership. The daughter dealership itself has a separate value for the building that Toyota owns. You know, it's just the solar field itself has its own account. And um, that's, again, they pay a fee per kilowatt to the state if it's over 50 kilowatts. Um, and, you know, generally we're at 15 to 20 percent of the tax, the total tax rate. So it's actually, with the tax credits and everything else, if you have the coin, it's a pretty good investment, or it used to be when, when they were uh, giving tax credits. The only other thing I think is to talk about how we appreciate uh, and what we plan for the future, because I think we have the past, which we're just finishing up for 2018, and, and Tom is gearing up with, uh, I think, a good working relationship with, uh, through Dana with uh, Rosemary and Corinne to start the uh, Unlanded Mobile Homes, and there's about 200 of those that Tom is going to work into his schedule while he's here on Wednesdays. Clarissa will continue to be here. And we're going to update those for what the market says as of April 1st, 2019. So that'll be what we call categorical reappraisal um, of the unlanded mobile homes in the six or seven parks in town. Uh, Weston's being the biggest, but the other one's off of right. Barry Montpelier Road. And um, we revisited the agreement we have uh, and reserved out of what Tom and Clarissa are going to make on that project to work something out with Dana and the town if Corinne ends up being overwhelmed, you know, and, and the workload for her helping Tom with scheduling exceeds, um, you know, what her normal work schedule is. But we think it's a natural because she's here, you know, um, and she knows the people, Rosemary knows the people. When we did the last reappraisal, uh, 
10 or 11 years ago, the town did schedule them for us. And that was part of the contract. And Rosemary was heavily involved in that. So, so I, my um, understanding of how that works is you are going to be sending them out in increments, not all at once. Yes. As far as yes. so many, yeah, like um, then there'll be an instruction for them to make an appointment. Yes. And mm -hmm. and I think Corinne would be natural because lots of people might just stop in to do it, thinking yes. that they could do it. Um, and also, you'll have a telephone number that they can call, and she would yes. be good at tracking who's yes. who's checked in and when it is, and and those type of things. Did I refer to as Corinne? Did I say Corinne? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 I'm terrible with names, so, but that's good. Um, yeah. I'm, Enthused about that working together with, and that was the item in our values that was most askew. Yeah. Unland and mobile homes are always uh, a problem because um, a lot of times it depends on the park. You can take a mobile home and and put it in four different parks, and on the site it'll have a different value. It'll show up with different sale prices based on the desirability of the park. I mean, um, if your parks are pretty much similar, it's not a big issue. In Hartford, we had like a lot of, we had five parks that were dynamically different. And so it was, it, it, they're tricky, you know, and while the salvage value, if you pull them off, is not much, if they're sitting in the park, they carry value. Uh, but it's, it's a tough category to keep, um, it, it keep the equity in because of that. So a year from now, when we're sitting here having this meeting, those values will be incorporated into the grand list? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. We did the same thing in St. George for this year. About half of their grand list is unlaid in mobile homes. Mm -hmm. They had a COD, or coefficient of dispersion, which is supposed to be under 20 for that category of 48. Yeah. And it was mm -hmm. huge, and it was just as uh, uh, Clarissa had mentioned. You know, one park was, I mean, there were three vacant homes that are ready to, you could torch them and they would go down and lunch and, and the other one was up for sale, so people were anxious about it. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Any questions for the appraisers? Mm -hmm. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate you working with us, Diane and oh. Dana. <laughs> Well, we have our moment. Yeah. <laughs> Clarissa, you're a natural at this. You should be on television. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget your keys. Self board meetings are tough. I, I, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Treasurer's report, Diane. Okay. I want to make you aware that the Veemers rate uh, for the employer has changed, and the last time it changed was in 2015. We're on Plan B, so it went from 5.5 percent to 5.625 percent, which is like a quarter of a percent. But that's the first time it's changed in three years. Um, and now I want to let you know too, as far as the amount of money that's in the reappraisal account, we have 185,375 dollars in that reappraisal account. Okay, that we have in the sub accounts all, and I'm sure that we will not be using anywhere near that amount for the mobile homes. So we'll still have a good balance left afterwards. To, have they give us, given us a sense of what that the time commitment for that would be, and how much of that budget would have to tap into? No, I think they told us it was eighty five dollars per trailer. And yes. Times it by two hundred, and then maybe some. Oh, parcel. okay. Yeah, it was yeah. Much, we we much discussed so. that. I can give you that okay. figure. Yeah. But I'm sorry so to have in my head, but not looking well, that's, that's that we're we have adequate. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the last full town appraisal we had done was what one hundred and twenty thousand. You know, I don't know what that what the amount was. Mm -hmm. I think it was one hundred and twenty. Because it was what in two thousand eight. I think that was the ballpark. Yeah, I think it was. And are we still putting money into that every year? No. We don't because we have such a. I mean, one hundred eighty five thousand is right. is okay. a lot. Um, I, if we were to you know have a reappraisal, then we probably with the first few years have to start putting money back into it because we repl the state replenishes it for us at like between twelve and thirteen thousand dollars a year. Yeah. That's right. And the that's state contribution up. goes yeah. in every year. Yeah. yeah. But it got to the point where we were, we our quote, um, our CLA was so high that there was no point in putting money into it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I can't remember what board did that one, but a while ago. It was, I think it's back and it was before Diane. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think it was like in um, 12. 
people up yeah, here. Well, I think we had like 150,000 in the account, and we just right. said, yeah. you know, Done. no more. Yeah. Right, and the state keeps adding to right. that account. Okay. And then I want to make you aware that the assessors are, are supposed to be helping me print tax bills on July 10th, because I have to have them out the door by July 15th. And that's all I've got. So they've been working out well. It seems like they have. Been. Yeah. yeah. We've had a very nice relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really I, worked I, out well, and it, and it's you know, I think for from their standpoint when. It, Every town wants something different, mm -hmm. and I think it's they've been very amenable to what we want. The few times I've been in, just as a person, they were great. Yeah. I mean, they were helpful mm -hmm. and explained right. things. And, and yeah. I think you know, even the grievance um, people are people understand if you explain it mm -hmm. to them, so that can be understood. And I think they're good at that. So did he? He said a few because we have a sort of a thirty meeting coming up here pretty soon. So yeah, I'm not sure if you're going to have that one yet. But oh, all right. Uh, anything else, Diane? No. All set. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, approval of license permits, vouchers, and applications. Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number eighteen G twenty six with checks one eight two zero eight through one eight two three zero. In the amount of sixteen thousand one hundred and forty-five dollars and ten cents. Also, general fund accounts payable warrant number nineteen G zero one with checks one eight two three one to one eight two four one in the amount of forty-six thousand four hundred and fifty-three dollars. Also, to void check one eight two two eight, and also approve payroll warrant number eighteen dash twenty-six for payroll from June tenth, twenty eighteen through June twenty-third, twenty eighteen. In the amount of forty-one thousand one hundred and sixty-eight dollars and fifty-five cents. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, cite, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion carries. Um, okay. Town plan discussion and approval. That was the. Um, the item needed for the board needs to approve the town plan in order for us to send it send it forward. As you know, the Planning Commission had two public hearings, mm -hmm. and you have now had two public hearings. Um, they've taken input, they've addressed, um, been responsive to the input. Um, the consultant, I think, that we had was a very good consultant and, and uh, has it well organized. And I think we have a very workable plan for the town for the next eight years. So move to approve the town plan um, as approved by the Planning Commission um, with the proposed amendments as reviewed at the uh, 25th of June 2018 select board hearing. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, motion carries. Uh, sewer division funding approvals for capital project, Dana? Um, the sewer division, as you know, has been working on a project for um, changing the sewer line. Um, they have run into a few changes. Originally, it was felt that we could eliminate the Shaw's lift station and have the uh, sewer rerouted down Payne Turnpike North via gravity um, to the connection to the Montpelier sewer line, which is not possible due to sizing of the Montpelier sewer line. Um, the engineer for the um, sewer division is rerouting that. I'm hoping that we can avoid a lift station, but I'm not sure at this point whether that's going to be the case or not. The um, sewer division also um, has voted to go forward with this plan. In your packet, I gave you a copy of their minutes where they have approved that. Um, and they need obviously funding. They are proposing to go out to the town for a bond vote in the amount of two million two hundred thousand is the estimate. Um, in the interim, um, they're proposing to take a loan from the state clean water fund um, to cover engineering costs for forty two thousand two hundred twelve dollars. Both of those loans need to be approved by this board and um, for them to go forward. 
the bond approval for the two million two hundred thousand will the next item on your agenda is approving the warning which means it would go to the town for a vote to see if the town voted to proceed with the bond. So they're looking for your approval of these loans, two loans. Uh, the interim loan uh, would be paid back by the bond. So the um, what they're actually proposing doing is this um, this additional line, and then it says including any improvements to sewer pump stations that may be necessary. Is, is this servicing additional customers? There is a, there will be a potential to pick up additional customers. Um, Richardson Road, Birch Drive, I think it is, as well as development down Payne Turnpike North that is expected to occur. So, um, what's, what's the motion that we need to have now? Um, I guess I would look to you for two motions. One's to approve the interim loan for the preliminary cost, 42 to 15, and the second for the bond approval for the total amount. Okay, move to um, pursue a loan in the amount of $42,415 for the engineering for the sewer project. Second. Any further discussion? You think that motion is sufficient? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm going to have you sign for the loan in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you just want to restate the amount, uh, Jamie? Sure. Uh, it's 42215. Uh, I'll have on the, yeah. on the loan agreement document in the packet says forty two four fifteen. Yeah. On the on the warning it says forty two two fifteen. Yeah. On the so loan. Really? Let's uh yeah, let's what's going on? Straighten that out. I see forty two four fifteen on the email between you and Tom. So Ah. Oh, I know what you're looking at, Jerry. Yeah. You're looking at the total. Right. The payments are forty two, forty one, fifty. And I'm looking at the. I'm. I think it's my mistake. It is forty two, four fifteen. Yeah. Well, I'm well, sorry. You don't have to amend the motion. I just wanted to clarify that. I yeah. need glasses. I guess. <laughs> Different. That's the second. Thing. <laughs> uh, any further discussion on that? Hearing none, uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. So the paperwork I have on that, if I could just interrupt you to get that signed. Uh, Brad, I would need you to sign this line. This is for the 42,415. This is similar to the loan that um, was recently taken out for the water division, and those a portion of those loans is expected to be forgiven, and I'm still waiting for one that we have. Today's the second. you to sign as the chair on that one, please. Thank you. And then I need all board members to sign these two. Is that for the same 42? It is for the same okay. loan. You touch this thing, you're on another page.
Thank you. Okay, and then a motion on the bond approval for projects cost of 2.2 million. So move to approve um, the bond for the project cost for the sewer project in the amount of $2,200,000. Uh, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion <coughs> carries. don't have anything for you to sign on that, but I do have on the next item things for you to sign. Okay. Terrific. <laughs> and this is the next item is to approve the special town meeting warning and notice and as well as the official ballot. The two items on the ballot are Article 1, shall the voters of the town of Berlin adopt the 2018 Berlin Town Plan is filed with the Berlin Town Clerk on July 3rd, 2018. And the second is, shall a general obligation bond or notes of the Town of Berlin payable from revenues derived from the operation of the town's municipal sewer system in amount not to exceed $2,200,000, subject to reduction from the receipt of available state or federal grant and aid be issued for the purpose of financing the town share of the cost of construction a sewerage collection and distribution line on Payne Turnpike from Route 62 to Stewart Road. The estimated cost of such improvements is $2,200,000. And that's what, if you approve this, the voters of the town would be would be asked. Move to approve the review, um, I'm sorry, move to approve the warning and notice for the ballot items uh, the primary election on August 14th, 2018. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Uh, uh, sorry. Pause fine. for a second. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, <laughs> motion carries. Scares me. <laughs> well, has been approved yet. So. <laughs> it may scare other people too. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Are we going to send us some notices, maybe like front porch forum or something like that? To we will publish that to say, hey, this is what this is. Tom, Tom is. Um, he and I have talked a little bit about the public relations part of it. Um, also, there has been a a salary survey underway being done for this project. I don't know if you've gotten one in the mail, but um, yeah. uh, I'm not sure what, do they choose just sewer or whole town? No, whole town. I saw, I saw an email or something. I don't remember no. seeing the survey that went mm -hmm. out by mail. And they sent out two surveys so far, and now they're going door to door. Mm -hmm. Unless you filled it out, yeah. You didn't get one either? I don't think so. Okay. Or maybe it's one of those things you just filed it. Well, I usually open this stuff from the town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not from the town. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, Who is yeah, it? Rural, rural Water Association. Mm -hmm. I oh. almost think, though, the envelope, because I also got it, but I, I think it was it. the town of Berlin mm -hmm. on it. Of course, I expected it, too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Made. So, is, so is it that we need a certain percentage of people in town to respond and then to see what what like income threshold do yes. we get? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, select board review and approval of fiscal year nine, uh, 2019 salary and wages. The um, as you know, when the budget was built back. Um, before back, I guess it was last December, um, the non-union employees, it was built in the budget to 
offer a 2% raise to the non-union employees. These figures represent that 2%. Um, I will point out that Tom, um, we are looking at the portion of his salary that is for zoning. Uh, water and sewer, his water and sewer funding, which is 16 from sewer, 5 from water, so that's 21,000, um, comes from the water sewer division. So portion from the general fund that you are actually voting on is the 42, 432 for Tom, which is included in the list here. Um, so his budgeted rate for the town is $20.40. The town right. portion. Right. Whereas his actual rate is different, $30.50 with the water and sewer. But otherwise, everything is, this is strictly a 2% increase all down yes. the line. Okay. Yes, it is. Uh, move to approve the uh, fiscal year 19 salary and wages as presented. Second. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Selling the municipal fiscal year 2019 tax rate, Dana? Yeah. Um, now that we have the grand list, and we recently, last Friday, I guess, the state figures were available for the school. So I'm going to give you an updated sheet that we just did today that shows the state. I said I was going to make copies of those, and I didn't. So <laughs> let me go do that. Thanks. So our meeting with those guys making all the racket maybe switched over to the zoning issue. Three weeks ago. They were out there today going for the three weeks ago, Saturday night. Was that them? Yeah, if you can hear me, it's loud. It was I, it woke me right up and it sounded like gunshots went through my house. It you so know, bad. it's so weird because they just he says, I'm the only one, I take everyone down there. And I say, what about shooting at the night? He says, that ain't me. And so you just told us it was your friend. You're hearing it from somewhere else then. Mm -hmm. And that's, really he's just, really he just will say whatever he needs to. So anyways, there was a second reading. I'm going to explain it over there. Maybe it's going to be off. Well. Mm -hmm. <coughs> just it's not even their property. Imagine if you went in the usual place and you came back in the school with beer cans. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. yeah. So we have the municipal portion of the tax rate. Last year, the rate was 4670.4670 per hundred. Um, there are two scenarios that we've given you, um, and again, the rate is made up with the budget voted by the town, the article appropriations for the special articles plus the fire department. Um, the other items we can subtract from that are our income items, um, our item from other revenues, our pilot money, and the current use money that comes in from the state, uh, which is 455000 So we need to raise by taxes $2 Seven hundred in one scenario, two million seven hundred ninety-eight thousand two thirty-five. That is if we don't use any of the excess undesignated funds that were in the audit report last year, which is forty-three thousand nine twelve. So on the left is the rate not using the undesignated fund. On the right is using. Um, and I think when we were working on the budget, fifty-five cents is about where we were. Um, when we were doing that. So 0.5595 without the undesignated and 5507 using that 43,000. Um, what that does for the municipal rate on a, and correct me Diane if I've got this mixed up, but on a $200,000 home it would increase not using that excess $185 for the for year, for the municipal portion only, and $167.60 if you use the $43,000. Um, using, adding it in, obviously you have to pay the education taxes with that. 
the education rate for Homestead is dollar one point six six eight three. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And the non Homestead. I only that, put the Homestead. You, you just use that one for yes, this purpose. Yes. Okay. And that's what I did last year as well. And this is just an example. Mm -hmm. Right. So it shows that if you had a two hundred thousand dollar home using the first scenario, your bill would be up just under three hundred dollars, two seventy seven eighty. And in the other scenario, two hundred sixty dollars and forty cents, because the school portion was up about ninety dollars, ninety two dollars, something like that. Last year, we had the advantage of a of a pretty good excess because of the winter before. We hadn't spent it on winter maintenance, but unfortunately, we don't have that luxury this year. Yeah. How uh, so? We have forty-three as as a uh, undesignated. That was the increase from the FY seventeen that we had. I mean, the year before was like one hundred and thirty-five thousand or something yeah. like that. Last year's was forty-three. So, how much do we have in the bank right now? And the is, undesignated. Yeah. we do have right. We do have other undesignated. Yeah. Funds which Diane has. And this is at, as of the end of last year, obviously, because yeah. we don't have this year's numbers yet. So, all in all, we got $583,411. Of undesignated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as of Right. The recommendation of the state that. is to have 5% of your budget as undesignated. 5%? To save 5% of your budget. So we certainly have that. Yes. We're not in bad shape with the money that's in the bank. Um, yeah. Almost, no, not quite 20%. You know, um, obviously it would be wonderful if you use that for the tax rate, and it would be a great help to the taxpayers. But as I mentioned last year, it's kind of a false tax rate, and yeah. it's going to catch up with you, mm -hmm. if yeah. not this year. Yeah, that's sort of moving things yeah. from right. the one-time one money into the budget that we've seen this in the news already. <laughs> right. And, right. and, right. and having the, the comfortable undesignated fund balance does assure us if we have a disaster that we have to right. so right. finance. So you don't, you're not worried about yeah. cash flow. I mean, doesn't like, Berry City borrows to meet cash flow. Right. I heard that. Yeah. We don't have to do that yeah. because yeah. we have Which sufficient pretty resources. Good because it doesn't cost us any money. But second right. of all, we also don't you know the administrative overhead of tracking down. Okay, we get a line of credit, and, mm -hmm. and, and we do that. get interest on that money, although it's abysmal. Sure. But, <laughs> but is it just in a savings account, or is it in this like a? It's CD a sweep. Or? It's yeah, a sweep account at the bank. It's really the highest that we mm -hmm. can legally do. Okay. Okay. Legally, you know, they, you won't let us do the you know pork bellies and things yeah. like that. So <laughs> we'll talk after. Yeah. <laughs> So, so it, it, I think it makes perfect sense. I mean, that I, I think the, the increase is pretty minimal. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not not much, but I think the uh, it's it's the budget we passed. It's not great, but I think having spent well, what we did the last other year. and the other part of it is um, I always hate having to tell people there's an increase in taxes. Yeah. However, you have things that have to be done. The Mirror Lake culvert, the the equipment, the roads, the the um, the police. I mean, it's yeah. unfortunately you've got to balance both sides. Well, we we started that equipment fund, or did that get? No, we started that right, mm -hmm. and it stayed whole. So far, I mean, just, it's in the. It, we've yeah, had two days, and we yeah. haven't raided it yet. Way to go! This was this is the first year that we started that. that. All right. Yeah. And how much are we putting it. into that? 50, uh, no, it's more than that. Yeah. Well, it was with the culverts. It was kind of just a mass amount. I don't have that right here, but it was... I think it was like 184000 oh. Something like that. But, that, that was, cul but that was to cover the culverts. But that's with the culverts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't groups. designate which was going to be right. which. It was that's just a lump sum amount that... Our hope is not to, you know, that the money that we don't spend on the culvert that we can 
roll chain over. roll over into a reserve account yeah. right. this time next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then keep adding to that reserve. That so way when we need, need the new grader or we need the new truck. The, see Sorry. if we could get our borrowing mm -hmm. so we don't have to borrow no. well, for equipment. No and they keep saying it'd be nice, it'd be nice to have the money in case yeah. that something just gave up. Last time it was on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wonder if we, if we ought to set a policy at some point looking at the, so if there's $500,000 in the bank essentially that's doing little in the sweep account, does it make sense in just looking at like a five-year plan or 10-year plan for this, you know, this kind of capital account as, as we're putting money into it, does it make sense to maybe seed if we say we want to be at you know, uh, five percent. We want to be at ten percent, whatever we say. And then, when we have that comfortable buffer there, you can take the the rest of that and then say, okay, now we'll get that capital expense account started, mm -hmm. with the end, with the expectation that year after year down the road that we'll be buying into it and we can maybe. Get ahead I, of I'm not sure if I'm understanding what you're saying. Um, you're saying that using the the fund balance to use that as seed money is that what I'm hearing you, you use saying? Use that in, put yeah. that into one of these re reserve accounts. That okay, I think you would need voters approval right. to do that. You would okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, certainly it's okay. a good it's idea, feasible. but it's just it's, it would have to have the yeah. go before. Okay, the well maybe yeah. maybe that's something that we should consider. Yeah. But I might yeah. think about it because yeah. I mean, if otherwise, if it's if it's sitting there and earning what a percent and a half, if that, yeah, oh, it's not much. Much. And it would still be earning the same percent and a half mm -hmm. if we put it in a reserve account. I mean, it yeah. sure, but but rather than being a really really large buffer, we could actually put it to use. I mean, we wouldn't be able to handle as big of an emergency, I guess. But right, you mean generating revenue with that money? Yeah, at a greater rate. Generating so revenue, or at least um, offsetting offsetting, offsetting okay. future interest. Because right. if That's if we good. if we have our you know the, the trucks getting replaced on a regular cycle, but mm -hmm. we're we're still plowing money into it. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but if it's if we can get started with that, there, it's, right. I think it's we can sort of s spread that. Uh, more. Spread that out. Open. Yeah, no, I think that's a good idea. I, I mm -hmm. thought you were going into generating more cash. No. Yeah. So, no. Well, naturally, we try to get the most interest. Yeah. We but can. The, you know, but with that bigger interest comes the bigger risk, and with the tax. Yeah, just, that's that's not. I don't think that, that makes sense. Yeah. But if we can avoid right. you know, taking out loans, I mean, that's that's how the goal. Many I percent think. right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. I remember one of the fire department meetings. They were talking about a new truck that was astronomical. <coughs> and you you are it, going to have will, them come to you. It, it, it so, will it will be yeah. coming in not yeah. very long. Yeah, and With, it makes it greater, look cheap. <laughs> but it, um, so I guess we um, we're looking to have you tell us what you'd like us to set the rate at. As Diane mentioned, we need to plug that in and get tax bills out so they'd be out in time to be collected. Mm -hmm. August 15th, which the voters voted for the first due date. Is it the 15th? Yes. Yeah. I, I would personally keep the undesignated funds for the town. It's just looking for, like you say, with that culvert was a surprise. And that, that's pretty big money. But we have that money. Mm -hmm. We do We do have that money in our budget, and yeah. we've got the grant that will cover the 80% of the culvert. So that culvert, but we still have another one on right. Richardson Road that but, we and don't And that may have. be a poor yeah. example. Which obviously we have to deal with that as well. Yeah. Um, but it's you know it's going from forty six seventy to fifty five oh eight, even with the undesignated funds mm -hmm. tax rate. I mean that's a <coughs> that's a significant jump I think. Yeah, it, it is. That's, that's true probably. Well, the total bill would be just under Two hundred sixty dollars increase on a two hundred thousand dollar house, mm -hmm. right. as opposed to two seventy seven. Right. If you don't use any of the forty three thousand, right. mm -hmm. or if you choose to use another figure from the the five hundred thousand we have oh, in the undesignated fund, this what we've done traditionally is every year <laughs> is take the previous year's excess mm -hmm. and presented it to you. Um, what do we usually do with it? Give it back. Oh, we do. Yeah. I mean, it's their money. Yeah. It's the right. But I'm just, money. as you said, you give it back now and you ask for twice as much next year because. And that's what's built up our 500000 over right. years yeah, is, is this <coughs> underspending the budget or greater revenues than we anticipated. 
We do, we're very conservative with revenues, as I always mention, because I'd rather have too much than not enough. <coughs> um, and then be pleasantly surprised again. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. but, and, and we've been cons consistently, as long as I've been here, consistently coming in under budget yes. and not really having to tap into this. So I wouldn't be super surprised if we come up with the, roughly the same amount of undesignated funds next year. Next too. year. Mm -hmm. So okay. we hopefully shouldn't see that sort of artificially inflated right. jump next year, if there is a jump. So it sounds like you guys think we should give it back. I think so. OK. Yeah. So like, what, 5508, yeah. round it up. Mm -hmm. Move to set the municipal tax rate to um, 0 0.5508. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Did you have what you need, Diane, mm -hmm. to get the bills out tomorrow morning by 9 o'clock? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> start, start that pot of coffee right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, I would be. Okay, approval of audit agreement, David. This is the annual uh, agreement that you signed for the auditors. Um, the letter basically outlines the responsibilities that the town has to provide them information and assist them in the audit, and also that they're not responsible for anything. So <laughs> it really it really works nicely. Um, but it is something that is traditionally done every year, and it calls for the signature of myself and the board chair. When is their contract up? This is the last year. Yes, this is the third year. So we we'll be contract. preparing that for bid yeah, coming up. Yeah. Okay. So move to approve or move to authorize the town administrator and the select board chair to sign the audit agreement as presented. Second. All those in favor? And I have Aye. Two. Aye. two of the same. The auditors again, Diane, they're coming in for the preliminary. The preliminary will be August 27th, and then the audit itself will be the first week of October. Right. The nice thing about having the same auditors more than one year is we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Right. They, you they actually save the, money yeah. because they have all the information, so that's a big plus. We kind of know what to expect from them, and they know what to expect from us. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we were talk, told also by other people is that because the firm is big enough that what some companies do is what they say we will stay with your firm but we want another one of your auditors to do the audit and you know we've heard of that mm -hmm. so that might be so something fresh eyes so to speak. yeah just you know we might want to consider that next time thank you Uh, approval of select board minutes for. Uh, Can't do it. Yeah, we don't have a quorum. On, on either one. No. Okay. I'll bring those back. <laughs> Town administrator's report. <laughs> um, we have put out the winter sand bid that will be, that we've asked to have the bids come in for your next meeting, which is July 16th. Um, Yes, July 16th. Um, I also received a letter today that from Beth Doubt that she would like to send to Berlin residents regarding the ash borer giving information. You know, we spoke with yeah. Beth a few years ago um, regarding that. Um, a few weeks ago. Did I say years? Yeah. <laughs> How time flies when you have your right. And I'm still working on getting right-of-ways, but Beth plans to do an inventory in the fall, and this was a letter that she has asked if we could send out. I thought if you chose to send it out, we could include that with property tax bills. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Perfect timing. I think it's a. I think it's a good letter. It, it uh, advises people of what the ash borer is, and they. Um, Beth and Dave didn't want to have their contact information on, the, on here? Um, 
That's a very good question. I don't know. We probably could add that. Because I mean, if somebody asks you, I would refer to them anyway. Questions yeah. about probably. that. Probably. Yeah. Makes sense to stuff. Yeah. I see they put a number down for Dan. Okay, so that yeah, I did put Dan's number in there thinking and, and, they needed and maybe to. Maybe he's a better person to contact, anyways. Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking I don't really need a motion, just a consensus. If you're, yeah, if, I, you're, I would think if you're consent. Um, I would also like to inform you of kind of an unfortunate mistake that was made. Um, I was under the impression that Tim had told me that we were going to rebid the paving bid for Payne Turnpike um, North and Granger Road. That was the additional paving. And as you remember, at the paving, we had quite a discussion on paving. Um, and that was discussed. Um, we had, Tim and I put out a second bid, which really we should not have, um, because it was discussed at the meeting that you had. So I have uh, retracted that bid, but in the event someone says something to you, mm. that is what happened. Okay. Um, it's unfortunate, I'm sorry it happened, and um, we will take steps so that doesn't happen again. Was, was it a bid, or was it one was doing tonnage and one was doing yards? Well, the bid was, the it was the bid, but they were doing it on two different ways, and we were, it was a, um, so I, I was sort of. What happened is the yeah. conversation, the bid that we originally sent out was for paint, um, Fisher Road, Fisher Road only because of the grant that we're getting. But then Kim is always trying to get as much done as he can, and I don't yeah. blame him. So if he had money left over in his budget, he was talking, um, doing paint trim bike north, there's a section there that needs to be done by Shaw's going up through the mm -hmm. intersection, yeah. and then Granger Road also is in need of being some attention. Mm -hmm. um, Tim, and at that meeting, they were informally talking about what it would cost per ton um, to do that. And so by putting out the second mm -hmm. bid, we really are not, that's not the right thing to do, right. since they already talked about it. Mm -hmm. right. I was thinking of something different. But I wanted you to be aware that happened. Wayne, Wayne does know about it. Um, I haven't talked to Angelina about it, but I will. Um, so in, in the event someone asks you, we've rescinded the bid. Um, the other item that is an open item that we've been working on is Brown Mill Road, the speed limit on Brown's Mill Road. Um, the police department went down one day and um, sat there, I guess at the end of the day, and, and kind of monitored traffic. The, I've asked them to put the speed limit machine down there, although that doesn't record anything. I probably shouldn't say that in public, but it does, you know. Mm -hmm. So the only person that knows they've gone speeding is the person doing it. Um, and I've asked Bill today if we could do another maybe in the morning. Um, say seven in the morning or something mm -hmm. like that. The uh, guideline from the state about, you know, taking a survey of a hundred cars and, and so forth, we're trying to stay as much as we can, but I don't know, 30 cars maybe go in and out of there. That road, you have to live there to want to go there. Mm -hmm. um, so I will be bringing that back to you once we have the second, and I'm hoping the next week we'll have a second visit that police will give you some data although our data is limited. Um, right now, when he was there, he did not really see any evidence of speeding. Mm -hmm. And he was in a place where he wasn't recognized, as they are so good at. Um, <laughs> so anyway, that's still on the table. Um, mm -hmm. And that, I guess, was the end of my report. OK, thank you, David. Uh, round table, Pete. Uh, no. Yeah. Nope. <clears throat> Dana, on the on the bid for the asphalt, is there any way that we could just take and word it so that uh, the uh, it's for the job, not by the ton, not by the it's yeah, for the job. We want two inches taken out. We want two inches put back. That's the distance. That's the width. Give us your bid. I think that's an excellent idea. We are also 
going to work with both Pike and Hutchins on unsuggested bids to make it as clear the, the point make it as clear as possible. Um, nobody's going to have the same tonnage. Um, yeah. Their calculations is always going to be we are looking for the price per ton. Yes, you want to have we're going to pay half a mile. It's so many feet, twenty five hundred feet. And it's um, forty feet wide or whatever. To get an estimate, I think the you know the vendor certainly would want to get an estimate, but that would be up to them to do, right. and right. we would come um, with it because we're not um, we're not professional paving. Um, well, I was just saying if you just did it by the job. So I think my goal is to be as inclusive as possible, and also to be as clear on the bid as possible, and I don't mind asking people and telling them I need help to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I was just thinking, you did it by the job. It would take out all the right, uh, all the yeah. So I think that's all the confusing stuff. I, I think we're in agreement. Yeah. yeah. So does paving come? I know it comes in different sizes. So different, would they determine? Well, we would know, tell them that we'd want um, half a quarter. You know, inch like an inch overlay or a two-inch base and another inch overlay or however they word yeah. that. So we would have to tell them that so they could figure in what right. they need for. But the I mean the actual. Aggregate itself doesn't that come in different sizes? Well, you got base coat, which is a little bit coarser. Then you have a top coat, which is a, which is your smaller stone. So we would know everyone's given us the same product. That's what yeah. I mean. I, all right. We would also, and what we you learned know, last time was, we'd also have to know: is it being reclaimed? Are we using that material as right. a base for the new road? So a definition is it being of what we're buying taken off the road, and and we had that discussion. Yeah. you know, with the. But if you did it by the job, you can always put those little caveats in there. Right. You know, just the, so the tailings come back to the town garage. The you know whatever right. you want to do, but easier to understand stuff. Yeah. And easier I don't know us, why this right. year was so difficult because I mean really we've been using the same bid, but right. uh, there's but always we were room for converting the yards to the tonnage to the comparison. And if you went by the tonnage, this one was you know it got it got confusing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, any executive session tonight? No. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.